Hello and welcome to the EMP Tech Group. Today we wanted to spend a few minutes and talk to you about a service we provide for a lot of our customers and that's our wireless site surveys. We, um, we don't do these every day, we don't do them every week, but we do several a year. And if you're gonna do a, a wireless site survey and you're gonna do it right, you have to invest in some hardware and software. So we wanted to tell you a little bit about that. Uh, also show you uh, the end result before we install access points in a, in a customer's facility, some of the work that we do, mounting the uh, access point on a board uh, and identifying them. So from the floor, you can easily look up and know which, is, uh, which access point is which. And today I've got uh, with me here um, a, one of our long-term employees, uh, senior technical guy, Chris Compton, who um, has been with us for 14 or 15 years. And so he's done a bunch of these site surveys and is kind of the owner of this equipment and doing this uh, work, primarily doing this work for us here in our group. So Chris, on the left, we've got some Echohal product that we use. Tell, tell us what that is. Yeah, Dave, so right here we have the a standard iPad that is connected to an Echo House Sidekick. Um, this is what people in the industry would be uh, calling a spectrum analyzer. So it basically looks at all the different channels uh, that a wireless network can be on, and then it will tell us feedback. So as you can see right now, I'm just on a standard software that comes with the Echo House once you're uh, connected and it's telling us our signal strength, uh, SNR, which is noise, um, channel quality, uh, which is always a fun one because you don't know what your neighbors are on. So this will tell us what, you know, network channels are bad for us. So if you are in a network that had a ton of your channels bad, you might switch those to other channels to make your network roam better. Um, so Chris, when you do a survey, you'll walk around with this Echal Sidekick, with this software, and you're kind of collecting signal strength and information uh, around that, that customer's facility. Is that right? That's exactly right. I okay. walk around all the facilities, typically every six feet or so, to get enough signal for the whole building. And then I'll come back and put it in some software, and that will give us uh, reports and it'll let me identify any known issues. Cool. Well, we're going to show more of that when we show how you generate the reports after you've done the site survey. For a minute here, let's think about this uh, access point over here. So that's a, a pretty high-end Cisco access point, right? Yeah, this is a Cisco 2802. Um, it is a very nice AP. They, this has been replaced, obviously. Cisco updates them about yearly. Uh, this is our favorite antenna, though. Uh, this has not been replaced. This is an omnidirectional antenna. Uh, it puts all four, as you can see, there's one connection uh, into one antenna, and it has great range. Cool. And then again, we mount these to a board. Uh, they have the identification for which access point this is. So uh, in, in warehouses, these might be 30 or 40 or even 50 feet up in the air. So if you don't do some kind of good identification, you're not sure which access point you're looking at. And frankly, they're hard to find. So having that yellow label on there can can really help. And just a side note, we we started doing these uh, uh, wireless installations and wireless site surveys back in the Symbol Technologies days when Symbol, you know, had their wireless access points. Symbol gets acquired by Motorola. Motorola adopts all of that, uh, develops the, you know, or enhances, I guess, the wing architecture, which we know and love because it's really good at tracking fast moving mobile computers in a large space and allowing those to hop from access point to access point and even preemptively handing that device off knowing that they're going to be moving fast. Uh, and, and that went to Zebra Technologies and then Zebra jettisoned that off to Extreme Networks. So that whole wing architecture lives with Extreme now um, and we sell Extreme and we sell Cisco. So we're capable of doing pretty well whatever the customer needs for access points. Um, but wanted to show you a little bit about the hardware that we use. Uh, and if you get a quote from us for access points, you'll see some charges for these boards and the mounting and everything, which in order to do this in a, in a warehouse setting, that's really what the way to go and what you need to do. Okay, so we're over at Chris's desk now, and uh, this is what would happen after the on-site wireless site survey has occurred. So Chris is you know, logging all this on the tablet while he's doing the work, and then uh, comes back, and what you'll see here is the map Kind of shows what, Chris, kind of like a breadcrumb of you going around the facility and what your readings were, right? 
Yeah, this drawing is showing uh, my walking map, uh, and currently I have signal strength turned on. Uh, we can make this empty. And these dots here are the APs. Um, this is actually fed in from the Ekahal system. So I'm not the one adding these. The Ekahal system actually knows how to add them based on the signal strength and RSSI as I walk around the facility. So the Ekahal software will actually go put your AP here for best results. It can do that also. What I'm saying is that if APs are already in the facility and I walk the facility, then it will populate them where they I actually gotcha. are in the facility. Because but I can do a uh, predictive map. Okay, because sometimes you're going on and the customer's going, hey, I got some dead spots, I think, when you come in and do a site survey. Or sometimes it's just a raw naked building and we're going through and, and deciding how many access points are needed and where they should be. Yeah, when we're deciding where the APs need to be, and this is a new building, what we would typically do is a predictive map. So I would bring in the map and I would tell the software what devices and ha what areas we need Wi-Fi. It'll self-populate itself, but then we would go on site once we have those APs and do some testing to verify that. Okay, it's and I've heard you and some of the other guys who do this work talk about the fact that, you know, it put an AP in an impossible place, so we moved it a, a few feet away, but it gives you a general idea where to put things in. Correct. Okay, cool. And the best part, the, the, the coup de grace of all this, to me is, after you're all done with this, there's a report that's generated, uh, and, and this, to me, helps as a salesperson, helps me feel like the customer's really getting their money's worth out of this. So why don't you just kind of quickly scroll through what's in that. Yeah, so right here is basically a general uh, verification of the size of the building I went into and my walking path and the access points. Um, as you scroll through here, you're going to get, you know, things like signal strength, uh, channels. Um, a lot of these, like, are secondary and third signal strength. That's important for if you want RTLS or any other number of things where you want to be able to see things actually move throughout your warehouse. These uh, having multiple antennas for roaming are very, very important. Um, something like this is signal to noise ratio. Um, but if you really come down here, a lot of uh, what people like to see um, is this one. This shows what I was associated as I walked through. So it kind of shows us how I actually roamed the facility. Um, so what access points you were on at what point in the uh, in this tour? Exactly. Okay. And, and what most people focus on is this page. And this page gives you a general summary of the actual issue in the area. So as you can see, red is signal strength issues. Uh, S2 means that the secondary AP was not seen strong enough, which means that it would not roam to it if the first AP didn't work. And it might not work for something like RTLS. Okay, got it. Cool, and I'm looking here, this is a 34 page report that at the end of this, and is that the average size is 25 to 50 pages is the report size you get out of this? Uh, we break it down to about 34 pages. Um, it actually comes with about 160 pages. Okay, there you go. Cool, well, too much information sometimes, so we bridge it down to what's needed. So thanks uh, everybody for spending a few minutes with us on this. This is not something we promote very well, uh, we see customers kind of gouging for this, uh, for this, and these tools cost us four or five thousand dollars a year to to keep up to date. So we we get where you got to make a little bit extra money on uh, wireless site surveys, and we do char charge a little more than our hourly rate to do it. But we, you know, we have some big. Uh, companies that use us for this, but a lot of times we're doing this on a smaller company and charging them, you know, ten or fifteen thousand dollars for a wireless site survey is a little bit crazy. So we uh, we keep it uh, economical for the customers, but we do that also, um, you know, using the latest tools and the greatest tools. And we wanted to show you that a little bit today. So as always, thanks for spending this little time, uh, spending a little time with us here at the EMP Tech Group. EMPTechGroup.com, always the best place to get us. Take care.